Hey guys, Proper English here. Today I'm going to teach you about my three and a half tick adder. I'm going to show you how to build it. So that's three and a half ticks for eight bits. So I just turned the carry in on. Let's come over and take a look at the carry out. You can see that the carry signal ran across all eight bits and affected all eight bits without any extra repeaters coming off of the carry line. That's what makes this fast. The fact that the carry signal comes directly off of the carry line and into the second XNOR. In order to do that, you need some special design, both to the carry line and in the, uh, the second X NORS. But before we get into that, let's take a look at the carry in. So I've set this up so that there's a repeater, powering a block, powering some redstone. Now that's where the decay starts, right here. And that allows this to go for 8 bits. If it were to start here, it would not reach the 8th bit. So this is essential, this sort of uh, carry in design. Now, let's take a look at the half adder. So this is an XNOR based half adder. It's 1.5 ticks, and it puts the carry signal directly onto the carry line. You can really use any half adder that meets those specifications. And to be honest, you really shouldn't be using a, ca uh, a half adder that doesn't meet those specifications. Th that's pretty much the standard right now. One and a half ticks, uh, XNOR based, and leading right onto the carry line because that's going to keep it compact it's going to keep it fast now uh, let's take a look at what I've done to the carry line so I set up a little demonstration over here the normal sort of carry line that you see and the one that you would have seen if you watched my insta carry adder tutorial is up front here the carry line in this adder looks more like this. This is, the, this is a wave sort of design. And what this allows me to do is to use some uh, fancy XNORs and to avoid uh, annoying interactions with these pistons here. So we don't either directly power those pistons or end up generating some buds and, and ruining the adder. Now, because we're using a special carry line, we need to take one other thing into consideration we need to start at a low point in the in the wave okay the reason for that is if we don't start at a low point we're going to get a carry in signal bleed over into the second bit so let's uh, look at what that would be like I'm gonna toss a repeater in here so we're gonna pretend the carry in is uh, is this repeater powering this block powering this wire and let's toss a block up here as if this isn't supposed to propagate a signal. And, uh, and the problem is, now it is propagating a signal. So we're turning on this bit here, and we're turning on this bit here. And essentially, instead of adding one with the carry in, we're adding three. And that's a problem. That's going to ruin your day. Your adder's not going to work, and yeah, that's just, that's just not good. So, now that I've shown you the half adder and uh, the carry in and the carry line, let's take a look at this fancy XNOR that I mentioned. So, what I've got here is an excellent XNOR. This is one and a half ticks and it's two wide tileable. These are you know, great features. The one problem with using this in the adder is you get a situation like this. So, there's a piston that goes right there. And when this is on, we get a bud. And I will admit that buds can be very useful in some situations, but in plenty of other situations, they can be annoying as hell. And this is one of those situations. Fortunately, there's a way that I can uh, modify this XNOR so that we never generate a bud. So let's, uh, let's take a look at that. It's very similar to uh, the design that I just showed you, with one major difference. The repeater, oh yeah, it goes sideways like that. No, the repeater goes here. And there's some redstone. So now, if I power this, toss a piston in there, that piston is super happy. He's just chilling over there, Nothing's ruining his day. He's ready to help give the right answer. And, you know, we might be asking a bit much with this whole right answer thing. But, 
you know, I'll be picky about my adders and you know getting correct results. So let's add in a uh, a few pieces that correspond to things that you see in the uh, the normal XNOR that you you know you should all be familiar with. Let's toss this piston up here. Oh. And wow, I'm I'm winning today. All right. Throw in some lot piece because my color code is awesome. It doesn't tell you anything, but it looks cool. It's what matters. So now if we look over here, we see that these two wires are connected. This wire up here, there are this this block and wire correspond to this, you know, glowing rock up here with the wire on it. Now this one down here corresponds to this one over here, this, this iron block. Now, if we take some more of this awesome glowing rock, toss it right in there, we have the same exact situation. I mean, it's not the same exact situation. This one, uh, the signal's not as strong, but, you know, I'll take that for, uh, for three and a half ticks and avoiding silly buds. So, there's one issue. So let's uh, take this and turn it on. And let's do the same thing over here. We'll turn these off. So now the outputs are different. They should be the same. So why is that? Well, this piston over here is performing two functions. The first function is to allow this repeater, when, pow when powered, uh, to send a signal to the output. The other function is what it's doing right now, where it's cutting off this signal and it's not allowing this torch to uh, power the output. It's controlling when that torch can power the output. Same thing with the repeater. So over here, we've got the repeater function, but we're not controlling the torch. Well, the simple solution is to add a second piston that'll control the torch. And that's exactly what I did. So now, what we can do is just toss some redstone over here and it works. So let's take a look at, uh, at the truth table for this XNOR. So off and off is on, on and off is off, off and on is off, and on and on is on. That's an XNOR. That's exactly what we want. And now we're ready to take this and install it into an adder. So let's do that. So I just showed you how to build a fancy XNOR that can be used in a three and a half tick for 8-bit adder. Let me show you how to install that into this adder. Before I do that, let's take a look at the other XNORs here. Now on all of the odd bits, you can see that we're using this normal looking XNOR, the one you're used to. That's because we can. It, uh, it doesn't interfere with these pistons over here. But if we were tr to uh, try to use that same XNOR over here, we're going to run into an issue. And let's just demonstrate that quickly. We can throw some redstone there and some insulation. And now, once we power this, we have created a bud. And that's no good. The bud is not a good thing. So let's actually, uh, let's have a little fun with this piston before we're done with it. Let me put that there. And now, <laughs> yeah, that piston is not happy at all. It's not a really bad thing. Let's fix it. No, we won't be too mean to the piston. It's a nice piston. All right, so now let's uh, let's build this fancy XNOR in here and add in a little iron. Oop. Yeah, so glowstone is, is awesome. It lets us do so many cool things. It's funny because I was a little hesitant to start using it. I when, So when glowstone got all of its new features, I wasn't really playing too much Minecraft. I was taking a little break from it. And so I came back, and now I was expected to use this glowing rock in all of my uh, my creations and ruin my awesome color code. And, you know, I wasn't having any of that. I was like, eh, I've gotten along fine without glowstone. What do I need it for? You know, it's it helps things. It's cool, but it's not going to do anything awesome. Well, 
it didn't take me long to figure out that it was actually going to do a couple of awesome things. And you can see here's an example of one. Uh, this adder would not be, uh, this adder in this compact version would not be possible without, without glowstone. And there are a number of amazing things you can do with the stuff. So, you know, I, I've adapted. It's kind of the way people were when pistons came out. You know, there were people who were like, oh, well, you know, pure redstone, that's where it's at. But uh, a lot of them, most of them, I'd say, ad eventually adopted, uh, adopted pistons too, because pistons are pretty cool. Although, pure redstone's pretty fun too. I enjoy doing some pure redstone builds from time to time, but... But I've got nothing against pistons. All right, so that should be uh, exactly what we want. Let's take a look because sometimes I leave things out and I don't feel like looking silly on the internet. Although I probably already do look silly on the internet, and you know it doesn't even matter. <laughs> so let's uh, let's turn these levers on. We'll give it seven and let's do twelve, just because I don't have to move down there. And <laughs> reach those other levers. So you can see the carry out is on. That's a value of 16 because it'd be going to the fifth bit. Then you've got 1 and 2. So 16 plus 1 plus 2 is 19. 7 plus 12 is 19. It's correct. And now you know how to build a 3.5 tick for 8-bit adder. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you and that you learned something. You can find a world download uh, to check out all of these uh, all of these demonstrations that I've got here. That's in the description. It's the same world download that was used for my Instacarry Adder tutorial. And uh, thanks for watching. I hope you uh, hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you want to watch some more tutorials. And like I said before, if there are any tutorials that you're interested in seeing, let me know in the comments, and and I can do them. All right. See you guys next time.